Jillian, what did we do last episode? Uh, so last episode we covered essentially making our first, uh, our sparks, right? Or like our, our embers so that we could start to build out the initial part of our grenade explosion. Yeah, we, we made a new emitter and then we went kind of piece by piece adding the individual components of that emitter yep. uh, to build out this spark burst that we see. And this episode we are going to... We're actually going to connect it into blueprints. I think we, we got this far enough now where I want to see it in context. Context matters so much for the effects that we're building. And so we want to actually make it so that when that grenade nerf ball hits a blue box, it actually plays our effect. And so we can actually start to feel the impact as a player would. Absolutely. So we're back here. Uh, during the last episode, I had just placed this uh, basically on the ground. And um, Julian, do you remember why I rotated it upwards? I didn't really explain that very well. Should I go more into that? Yeah, I think for, from what I remember, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the we wanted to have a, a direction for our effect so that when we sort of connect it now in game, it plays out in that direction relative to. Yeah, yeah. So because the game play mechanics are going to be spawning our effects, we're going to need to define a major axis for it. Um, we're not actually going to be placing these effects around everywhere the player might cause an explosion. And so uh, what we're going to do is connect it and we need to tell it that I want the effect to be pointing in this particular direction. And so we're going to use the major axes that Unreal provides, which in this case is this big green arrow. And so that's why I rotated it to point up. So let's just dive into blueprints. Do you have any idea what blueprints are? I do in not. In Unreal? No. No okay. idea. All right. So one of the most powerful tools in Unreal is the blueprint, which allows you to effectively build a game just through connecting nodes and, and logic. It's meant to be fairly approachable, but it is still a brand new tool that we're going to open up that can be a bit overwhelming. There's a couple different types of blueprints. The first one that I'm going to call out here is just the level blueprint. I'm going to come up here and click open level blueprint, and I get this additional window. And you can see there's nothing in it right now, but this is just a, a blank canvas for me. And if I right click, like most things on Unreal, I get this giant context sensitive menu with loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff. What I'm going to look for is an event. And I'm going to create a event begin play. So now I get that when the game is played, I get to cause actions. For now, I'm just going to do a print. We're going to go old school debugging here. I'm going to print a string that says, hello, Julian. And then I'm going to say, we'll put a delay in. We'll put a delay for one second. And then I'll just copy this and paste it. And I'll say, you are awesome. And then I'll add another delay for one second. And I'm going to put in one more string that says most of the time. <laughs> there we go. OK, and now I'm going to come over here and I hit compile, go back to the game, and I press play. And what I'm going to be looking for, in this case, the, I know that the print string, it's going to print text on the upper left-hand corner of my game view. So when I do this, you can see it says, hello, Julian. You're awesome most of the time. <laughs> Right? And so I've just kind of caused a really simple primitive cause and effect. There's an infinite number of things you can do in Blueprints. Literally, this game mode is built in Blueprints, and so we're not going to cover the complexity of that. But what is important is just that I'm connecting a really simple chain of events and commands, and they have to go from one to the next. So the white lines are just connecting, saying, do this, and then once you're done completing that, do this, and then once you're done completing that, do this, and keep going down the, the stream. I'm going to leave that. It's a nice nice reminder for us as we continue the, the rest of this, this lesson. And is compile a necessary oh, yeah. thing that you do each time in order to it, sort of like save the changes? Kind yeah, of? exactly. Okay. Um, that's a really good call out. Uh, if you don't compile, then your changes will not update. And so you have to come over here and hit compile. And that's when Unreal is going to go in and make it into the game ready code Got to, to use. So I'm going to close the level blueprint. And I'm going to just point out that in addition to level blueprints, there's also object blueprints. And like this is where anything can ultimately be attached to the logic of a blueprint. And so this gun is, in fact, a blueprint. So if I come over here and I hit Edit in Blueprint, what we're going to get is just a, a whole series of nodes. But what's cool is that it's, it's slightly human readable. There's definitely a language to working in blueprints that you're going to have to work with. But you can see that this one says on component begin overlap sphere collision. And so what it means is that when something overlaps with that object, do something. In this case, it picks it up. And so we can see that it's starting to actually run through all the actions required for you as a player to pick up that gun, uh, attach it to the player, come down here, and we can actually see that it looks like this is where they've got these comments, so it's handy. This is the logic for actually firing the gun, playing the animation, spawning the projectile, et cetera, et cetera. So 
this is the gun. We want to play the effect off of the projectile, right? So I happen to know that that is just conveniently called projectile. So I'm going to go down to the content browser and I'm just going to search for projectile. And this is a decent opportunity for me to point out that there's also these really cool filters over here. So I could just say, only show me things that are blueprint classes. In this case, you can see that it removed the mesh for that projectile and it's only showing you the blueprint class. When I open this, I get the blueprint for our projectile and I get to poke around now. It's not too big, it's quite simple. So let's go look at what it is actually doing. There's a, an event for event hit. So when it hits something, do this stuff. And it looks like the very first thing it does is check to see if it's going to hit a physics object. And if it is, then add an impulse. And if it isn't, don't do anything. So eventually what we're going to do is, because I think we only want this effect to play on our physics objects and not every other surface. But for fun, um, let's just go ahead and spawn our effect anywhere. So when the event hits, I want to spawn an effect. I'm going to just drag out from here. This menu is context sensitive, and so the options that are available to me in this menu change depending on what I drag out from. In this case, I'm going to look for Spawn. I'm going to look for the Header Niagara and Spawn System at Location. And I get this big old box. I'm going to I'm just going to drag it up here. This is not very user-friendly and clean, but we'll run with it. You can see that I have a bunch of properties now. I have my system template. What do you think should go there? Our effect. Yeah. So to do that, I can or our system, rather. Yeah, our, our particle system. Um, I'm going to go back to the, our effect in the content browser. I need to remove my search and my filter. And there's our effect. And now I can come over here and I can press this arrow to assign it. I can also search in here. And so, you know, I knew that this was called Niagara System Grenade Explosion or NS underscore Grenade Explosion. I could have searched for it that way, too. Which, like, highlights the importance of file naming convention. Yeah. Yes. Okay, if I do this and press play right now, what do we think is going to happen? Presumably it will trigger our Niagara system on any sort of hit. Correct. The problem, though, is that we're not defining the location yet. And so somewhere at 0, 0, 0 in the world, our effect will play every single time we hit something. Probably not what we want. Uh, so what we do want to do is figure out where the hit location should be. And you can see that there's an output here called hit location. And we can just drag it in place, plug it into the location. The last thing is the rotation. What we want to do is make it so that whatever surface I hit, I'm playing out from. And so if I hit the ground, I want it to play up. If I hit the wall, I want it to play out from the wall. There's a really convenient language called a surface normal that is the direction uh, directly perpendicular to a surface. And so from the table, my surface normal is directly upwards. From the wall, it's outwards. And so the hit normal is defining the vector or the direction out from the object that's hit. So we want to actually align our rotation to that. Notice that the colors are a little bit different here, and it's because the data sets are a little bit different. Most of the time, you can just kind of plug things in and see what happens. When I do that, Unreal is automatically going to convert for me using this extra rotate from an X vector node. And dump. My job's done because Unreal is awesome. So now I'm going to go hit compile, and let's try it out. run around, and when I shoot, <laughs> we get bursts. And as you can see, when the ball sort of rolls on the ground and every single bounce, we're going to get a ton of them. You can also just go a little bit crazy. <laughs> That's why it works. But hey, this is fun. They're still playing, right? We're still getting explosions everywhere that I've at any point shot. Uh, and that's because we left that effect looping. So earlier when I was saying, oh, I'm going to go change this thing, I thought, you know what, hang on, I want to see this actually play out because this is kind of crazy and cool. Um, so to, in order to make this a game safe effect, we want to go ahead and turn off that looping attributes that only plays the one time that it's supposed to, right? Must we? It's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think we must, yeah, sadly. All right, so to go back and change that, we want to make sure that our emitter state is set to system as opposed to self. Self allows us to change the looping properties on every single emitter. But if it's on system, then I can just control it for the effect. And I tend to think, like, is this effect looping or not? So I really like leaving it on uh, system. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom, and where it says loop, I'm just going to say once. Great. Now if I come back and press play, we should only see one explosion every time. That happened because the ball sort of rolled. So sure, it was, yeah, it's, you know, it's triggering a ton of collisions. Yeah, it's yeah. 
Okay. So if we go back to the blueprint now, we want to connect this node that spawns our effect at that location uh, later on down the chain. If we go back and look, you can see that there's this branch node, and the branch is saying that once you hit, uh, or if you hit a physics object, go down this true path. Uh, if you don't, then go down this false path. And so we're just going to connect this in line over here. First, I'm going to disconnect the node. And so if you just hold Alt and click the white buttons, they both disconnect. Obviously, I've broken the connection here, so I'm going to reconnect that first. And then I'm going to move my nodes over here. Make sure that I reshape my comment box as needed to be kind to my other fellow developers. And this should all be connected now. So if we hit compile, go back and press play, run and pick up a gun and shoot a blue box, and I see it. But if I shoot the ground, I don't. It's kind of fun to try to juggle these. <laughs> okay. How do you feel about all that? It's looking pretty good. Okay. Connections make sense. Yeah. Yeah, so the, far. The beautiful thing about this is now we can actually see in context what it's like to, to play our game and see our effects. And in this particular case, it's an impact effect. And so it's supposed to feel rewarding. It's supposed to feel like I've caused something. And so usually the bigger, the more poppy, uh, the snappier the effect, the more rewarding and impactful. Audio obviously plays a really big role in this, and so if you're actually working with an audio uh, designer, then you know tag them in on this conversation as well. But while we're looking at this, it's a little bit big, but I think that we need to get more assets in here to see if it matters or not. Uh, maybe once we get like a big fiery explosion, that's going to feel feel right. Um, so I think for the moment, I'm good to call it here for this particular lesson. We ran through blueprints and sort of overviewed how to how to work in blueprints a little bit and then very specifically how to connect our effects so that it plays when we hit the blue box. In the next episode, I want to really dive into the heart of what we're doing, which is material work. Uh, so right now our effect is still just playing in circle. I think that we need to start looking at how to put textures on it, how to actually manipulate the shapes of those particles that we're playing with. Absolutely, yeah. And if, uh, if you're enjoying the content, if you're learning something, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, follow us on social. You can find all those links down below, as well as on our website, beyondfx.com. Uh, we have lots of great content. We have short form, uh, medium form tutorials, these longer courses. We kind of have everything you might need to learn VFX and to sort of begin that journey or just come if you need some additional information. Um, so yeah, we'd really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and follow us on social.